Now, let, let's say that you have a, uh, a Christine and, and she's telling herself that she's defective and it was her fault and she victimized herself and she has all of these negative thoughts. And um, once you get your A on empathy, I, I do the invitation step. And, and that's, there's a number of ways to issue the invitation, but the simplest is called the straightforward invitation, and that's where you would say something like, uh, uh, you know, you've been telling me, Christine, about some horrible things you've experienced, 30 years of rape and beatings, and then 10 more years of, of, of depression, and uh, my heart goes, goes out to you and uh, what you experienced was real and horrible and you know, almost beyond understanding and the uh, depression and the rage that you feel, the incredible anxiety, the shame are uh, overwhelming. And uh, I'd like to offer you more than just listening and support, and, and I've got some wonderful tools to, to share with you. I'd like to help you change the way you're thinking and feeling. And I'm wondering, would this be a good time for us to roll up our sleeves and get to work, or, or do you need more time to talk and, and, and vent and get support? Because that's really important, and I, I don't want to jump in before you're ready. And that's, that's called the straightforward invitation. And it just conveys to the, to the client that uh, you're aware of their suffering, you have compassion for their suffering, that it takes more than just talk, talking and listening to, to recover, uh, and, and that actual tools exist, that the prognosis is good, uh, and, and gives the patient the, the choice of you know, getting, getting going right now or getting more warmth and support before moving on to, to the methods. Now, um, Christine said that, that she did w want help and, uh, and that she was ready, ready to get going. She, she wanted to you know, get, get to work right now. The next uh, outcome resistance technique is called the miracle cure question. And the way I do that is, is to say, okay, uh, Christine, that, that's, that's great. Now, let's imagine a kind of miracle happens here tonight. And you walk out of the, the live demonstration, the session, saying, wow, that was you know, one of the greatest experiences of, of my life. Uh, it blew my socks off. What would happen? What miracle would you be asking for? And she says, well, I guess the miracle I'd be asking for is to, to value myself again. I've been feeling such tremendous shame and guilt and depression and anxiety, and I'm living in, always in a state of terror. I can, I can never relax. And if there was any chance that I could experience joy or self-respect again or self-esteem again, that, that would be the miracle. And then, uh, okay, now we know what, what, what she wants, and we know that she does want help. We haven't melted away her resistance yet, but she's saying, yes, pl please help me. A lot of therapists don't do these steps. They just kind of swoop in, assuming someone wants help, and begin to use your favorite technique, whether it's CBT or EMDR or whatever, uh, DBT or ACT or whatever, method or school of therapy that you're, you're focused on, but this is really just saying, do you want help and, and, and what, what would that help look like? What kind of, of help do you want? Because there's so many different ways that someone could be helped. But she said, if, if, if there's something, all these feelings that I have, if they, if they could be improved, that would be fantastic. I, she says, I've been trying for that for 40 years and it hasn't happened yet. And I said, well, okay, Christine, now um, let's imagine that there is a, a magic button, and I don't know if I have one in my slide. Yes, there's one. Isn't that cool? I found that on the internet. 
And um, <clears throat> I said, imagine, Christine, that there's a magic button right here in front of you. And if you press that magic button, uh, all of your negative thoughts and feelings will disappear in an instant, in a flash, with no effort on your part. And you'll go right into a state of joy and euphoria and self-esteem and your anxiety will vanish and your shame will vanish and your defectiveness will vanish and your rage will vanish and your depression will vanish. Will you press that magic button? And like almost all clients, not all, but almost all clients, you said, oh yeah, I'd, Sure, I'd press that magic button. And then, um, and then what, it, what I say is, well, you know, Christine, we don't have a magic button, but I do have some uh, tremendous uh, techniques to, to share with you. And there's an excellent chance that by the end of the evening, you will experience a, a tremendous improvement in the way you're feeling. And there's even a chance that all of these negative thoughts and feelings will completely vanish and you'll go into a state of euphoria. However, I'm not so sure that I want to use these techniques. I'm not so sure it's, it's a good idea to do, to do that. So now, right now, I'm kind of doing what's, what's called um, dangling the carrot, saying, I, I think I've got what you want here, but uh, then I'm paradoxing her and saying, I, I'm, I'm not sure we, we should really be pursuing that, that goal. And so before we do it, we're, we're going to do something called po positive, positive reframing. And, um, and, and so what, what we're going to do is, is, is I, as I'm going to say, but before we, we do that, Christine, uh, let, let's pause and look at two things that you might not have considered. And, and we can look at each negative feeling that you have and each negative thought that you have. And we can ask of each one of them two, two questions. Num number one, what are some advantages or benefits of this negative thought or this negative feeling? How, how is it going to help you or protect you? Like, what are some benefits of your anxiety? What are some benefits of your anger? Um, what, what are some benefits of, 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 of your d depression? Uh, in addition, we can ask a second, very different question. Uh, what is this negative thought or feeling show about you, Christine, that's positive and beautiful and awesome? Like, what are some great things about your rage? What are some great things about your depression? What does it show about you that's awesome and beautiful? What, what does your shame show about you that's positive and awesome? What, why, why, what are some great things about your defectiveness? What, what's wonderful about that? You're, you're saying that you think the therapist and the audience are going to ju judge you. What are some advantages to you in, in believing that? And also, what does that thought show about you that's totally positive and, and wonderful? Well, these questions are mind-boggling to the patient and to most therapists who have never heard of this approach, which is pretty new, um, b because society trains us to think that these are mental disorders, not manifestations of what's beautiful about me. In fact, we have a book called the DSM-5, the Diagnostic and St Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. So we think that depression is a bad thing that we're supposed to correct, and the therapist is in the role of the expert who's going to correct the patient's defectiveness. And we even make up theories about the kind of defect that you have. And so the psychiatrists uh, say, oh, well, this is due to a chemical imbalance in your brain. And, and by, the, by the way, there's really no evidence for that theory. There's a lot of evidence that shows that it's not true. We really don't know the cause of depression or any other psychiatric di disorder. There's probably biological factors and environmental family uh, factors. Ultimately, we don't know, but everyone thinks it's some kind of abnormality. And we're, what we're saying here is, 
what would happen if we turn the system upside down and look at the, the beautiful part of these symptoms? And that's what I'm going to be giving you a, an exercise on here. Uh, and on